Yo, what is up everybody, and welcome back to another Madden 21 online CFM game. We are in week 15 of the 2020 season here in the Premier Madden League, and today we have a battle of the Titans. And I'm not just saying that because we're playing Tennessee's football team, but because these are two of the best teams in the league going at it, the 9-4 Lions and the 10-3 Titans. This interconference matchup might not have much of an impact as far as playoff race because both of these teams seem like they are on their way to making the playoffs in their respective conference. Though our Detroit Lions are going to have to be a bit careful because the door is still open for us to slip in the NFC North as far as trying to win our division and we could potentially just drop out of the wildcard race as well with a couple of missteps. Our closing schedule is not easy at all. We play this Tennessee team today, we play the number one seed in the NFC, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers next week, and then we cap off the regular season against a Vikings team that absolutely destroyed us in our first matchup of the season. Now, if we can take care of this Tennessee team this week, that could potentially set up a battle with Tampa Bay for the number one seed and a first round bye in the NFC playoff seeding. That's huge. We are going to need some help. We're gonna need Tampa to lose another game along the way, but we can at least try to control our own destiny. But first things first, we have to focus on these Titans and specifically King Henry. Derrick Henry is on his way to a 2000 yard rushing season with a couple of games to spare. There's no doubt he's gonna cross that plateau against our Lions barring an injury. It's just how many yards he gets after that. This is a clash of styles. The Titans, they're gonna be running the ball a lot. And our Detroit Lions, we have Matt Stafford who's well on his way to a 5,000 yard passing season with a couple of games to spare. So we'll see whose style prevails. If the game is a slow pace one, grind it out for yards, that could benefit Tennessee. But if it's a quick pace game and we're flying up and down the field getting yards, that can benefit Matt Stafford and our Lions. So without further ado, let's take the field at Nissan Stadium. Nashville is packed blue all around because both of these things are blue. But more importantly, like I said, this is a battle of the Titans that is now underway. Matt Prater kicking off to Khalif Raymond, who is going to take a touchback down at the 25. And right away, here comes Derrick Henry on the first play on the pitch. Gets away from one defender, but is eventually tackled by Walker. And that's what we have to do all game long. Multiple bodies on number 22. It does not take one person to bring down Derrick Henry. It takes the whole team. Third down and five, though we might be forcing another pass, which we are from Tannehill. But Derrick Henry still finds his way to the football out the backfield on the angle route. He gets the first down. And now Henry on first down will get the carry in. We'll have to see just how many carries Henry gets on first down. We have to expect most of them. So far, so good as far as rush defense, though. It's whether we can hold up in pass defense now. Oh, and we will not on third down and eight. That's Janu Smith on the outside for the first down. A bubble to Khalif Raymond, the speedy wide receiver that they like to use in gadget plays like that. They get a first down out of it, and now it's back to Derrick Henry. This is the way the Titans are going to be playing, even in the passing game. Derrick Henry is the primary target, and he's going to get that screen pass, but not too far. Once again, multiple bodies. We are sticking to the game plan. We just have to get a stop on third down, which I believe we just did. Game tackling from Flowers and I believe Jamie Collins brings up a fourth down and two but no huddle from the Titans trying to get this first down it's actually a timeout from the Detroit Lions that pauses play and now the Titans they ship gears and they bring out Goskowski who is just good on the field goal so the Titans were looking to go for that fourth down and most likely running the ball with Henry but I didn't like our rushing defense setup for that play so I just called a timeout and we got him to kick the three, which I don't know was good or bad for us, but I'd rather do that than give up the first down. So here we are running the ball ourselves with DeAndre Swift, but obviously the Lions, we are, we used to be a pass first, pass second, and pass third team, but I think we've added a rushing game in that mix the last couple of weeks, getting DeAndre Swift going as we have a man in motion. That's Ty Johnson, and Johnson's gonna get the catch out the backfield. We did introduce Ty Johnson into the offense last week, and he ended up getting a nice touchdown, and Ty Johnson right on cue gets away from Bayard and Ty Johnson finds the end zone once again back-to-back -back weeks and Ty Johnson continues to make the most out of his opportunities I think I said in the last video he might be the new Boston Scott as far as you know randomly running back buried at the bottom of the depth chart just shows up in the middle of a blowout and makes a name for himself slowly but surely 
Ty Johnson, he is the fastest running back on this roster, and he could really be carving out more and more stamps for himself, especially with plays like that. Here's a big play, third down and two. Henry, not gonna get it. It's an RPO. It's Adam Humphreys who cannot get away from Jeffrey Okuda. That's gonna force the three. Now Kern with the punt, middle of the field. This is gonna allow Agnew to try to make this a return. Agnew not gonna get too much. So really quick, I just wanna let you guys know that yes, Okuda is a superstar and DeAndre Swift is a star out the backfield and he's gonna draw a flag. That's a face mask penalty. So not only do we get the big gain on the ground, we get 15 yards after Bayard gets flagged. That's Stafford, middle of the field. Ooh, that was intended for Marvin Hall. Cruikshank nearly had himself a play on the football. Second down. Oh, Matt Stafford with a hot one to TJ Hawkinson. We're back in the red zone, and Stafford dancing, buying time, and firing to Kenny Galladay. It's not quite the Galladay season, but it's nearly touchdown time. We are at the two-yard line, and this is where our offense tends to struggle sometimes, as it looked like Swift got ran to his by, own, by his own man right there, the fullback there, Jesse James. That was interesting. Second down here is Swift. Back at it with the lane, with the fight, but not going to get in. Just short third down and goal at the one. It's Peterson. Adrian Peterson, the future Hall of Famer with his first touchdown of the season. It's on a one-yard fullback dive. Tight, actually, Lions find the end zone once again. So this is just to cap off the earlier point, Okuda, he was always going to be a superstar. We didn't have a dev story for him. It was just he needs to play 500 snaps in order to become a superstar. And then we're going to lock the superstar ability of bench press on him. Okuda gets a second ability at 85 overall. So that's probably going to be a next season kind of thing. Hopefully next season kind of thing. But in the meantime, Okuda is a superstar and he's definitely playing like it. Derrick Henry is an X Factor. Uh, by all definitions of the meaning as Henry. Once again, he keeps on running over the first guy, but as long as we send multiple bodies at him, that's how you defend Derrick Henry. Now, how do we get stops on third down? Air tight man coverage. Johnny Smith actually makes the catch over Collins and gets a yard, but it's not going to be a first down. Clearly, fourth down and two to Titans this time. They're going for it, and they got Henry spinning. Oh, that's close, and first down. Down Titans! Oh my, oh my, when they say football is a game of inches. Um, they, did, they were not talking about that play, because I think that play was decided literally by an inch. And now here's Henry. Hurry up. First down. 10 rushes, 37 yards. We've got Henry boxed up for the most part. So they're going to try to go to Tannehill on first down on the read option. But Tannehill, he gets ran over by his own lineman right there. Second down. Henry outside. One-on-one -on -one with Tracy Walker. He fights for every yard, but Walker with an admirable effort to keep him contained. Third down. Our Warrior shoots the gap, and Henry doesn't Henry get the, the first. Here. And once again, a fourth and short. Short situation, no huddle by the Titans, no timeout by the Lions this time. They're going to let this one play, and the Titans are going to Henry up the middle on the trap, but he's trapped by the Lions defense. The Sean Hand gets just enough of a hand to make the tackle turnover on downs. How about the way this Lions defense is defending King Henry so far? Oh, Swift is rocked. Stafford's got it back, but the lost fumble and where the ball was spotted ends up taking us back so it's a third down in inches instead or actually third down in three that we're not going to convert instead of a first down in 10 so that could be a big play here if the titans can get themselves a drive going with about two minutes to go in the first half but the way this titans offense works whoa they need to get big plays and they're not really capable of doing it what does help is getting the ball at midfield because of an iffy penalty on jared davis who makes a fantastic tackle making up for his somewhat wrongs though here are the titans on second down and nine back to henry with some space oh tracy walker will not be winning that battle with henry but one more time third down and one and yet again it's henry who gets the first down runs a man over and goes to the 35 yard line this is about gotskowski field goal range with a minute six left in the game that's Janu Smith, the leading receiver at tight end for this Titans team. That ball is swatted by Trufon. Oh, second down nearly picked by Walker. Back-to-back -back targets for Janu, both going nowhere. Third down, Tannehill passing again to Janu again. And that is Jeffrey Okuda who holds on just long enough until Harris is there to make the tackle. Fourth down and two, one more time. And now the Titans are actually going to kick the field goal here to make it a one-possession game. Interesting decision there. The Titans... They seem to be flip-flopping on their 
you know, whether we go for it on fourth down and one and fourth down and two. But the fact that we're putting them in that situation, that's all we can ask for because that's the way the Titans are playing the game. They're getting third down and shorts and fourth down and shorts. We just, you know, all we got to do is make those plays, keep them the minimal yardage, don't let up the chunk plays. And with one timeout left in the first half, not really much there as far as attacking downfield. We run the ball with Swift on first down. This is going to be a conservative final half minute of the quarter unless something special happens, which will definitely not happen right here. Jayon Brown, a superstar for the Titans defense now. He makes the tackle no huddle from the Detroit Lions, but a timeout actually by Tennessee is they're going to try to force the issue and get the ball back. So here we are from our own 30-yard line setting up the screen, too. That is Ty Johnson out the backfield. Johnson trying to get blocked set up. He'll get the first down, but that's going to make us burn our final timeout. There's only seven seconds left, so we need a big play and get out of bounds or just go end zone as Stafford rolling, throwing. That's Hawkinson open, and Hawkinson's out the 41-yard line with two seconds left. Matt Prater on the field. 58 yards is the distance necessary. That's not even close. Forget about the distance necessary. How about the accuracy necessary? Was not even close. Yeah, that was a my bad right there. If we got the accuracy right, you know, there was a one mile per hour tailwind working against us, but that's pretty much zero. So it would have been close. Matt Prater's 97 kick power. I think it would have been... I don't know if we would have made it, but, you know, we had to take that chance. Whoa, look at Swift getting tackled on the play. Yashin, but that's going to allow Stafford to time the fire. Kenny Galladay on the catch. Not too much Kenny so far. How about Agnew wide open outside? Stafford spots him. Agnew getting away from one superstar, but tackled by the next. That's Adore Jackson with the wrap-up. The blitz, it's picked up. Stafford with time. Stafford finding TJ Hawkinson, who continues to elevate his role in this offense. Oh, wow. Unblocked lineman there. Hits Stafford as he throws the ball. Second down. Now that time, Stafford just straight up misses Marvin Jones. Looked like it would have set up a third down and short. Instead, it's third down and 10. Stafford rolling the pocket. He's got all day to throw this one. But great coverage by Tennessee. Sta Stafford actually takes off there. Gets about five yards. But we will inevitably settle for the field goal. Much easier for Matt Prater. He'll make that one up and good. Prater, for the most part, has been having a fantastic season for us. So... You know, not really any blemishes in his game. Can't put a 58-yarder on him. Otherwise, he's been reliable when we've needed him all season long. It continues now, and here are the Lions with an 11-point lead. Derrick Henry is still going to get the ball, though, because there's a lot of time left in this game, but you see the game plan is slightly being altered in, in a positive way. How about Raymond with the cutback? How about the space he had? Now here's Raymond on the bubble. Good tackle there by Coleman. Just trying not to give up the big plays. Here's another bubble. This is, I believe, Antonio Callaway who breaks off a tackle, but it's bounce out of bounds and one more time third down and in inches and they're just gonna go straight up the middle bully ball I'm surprised the Titans didn't do more of that in short yardage situations but still Derrick Henry 18 rushes for 60 yards this is the second leading rusher in the entire league behind Jonathan Taylor who is well over 2,000 yards already but man oh man you keep on giving Derrick Henry the ball eventually you got to think he's gonna pop one now it's 20 for 81 and that doesn't look too too bad and Cleve Raymond doesn't look too bad on the sweep they're really just busting up the gadget plays and refusing to actually pass the ball. Why would you pass when you have Derrick Henry untouched? He's gone. It's a touchdown. The Titans have roped their way back into this game. Two-point conversion here to make it a three-point game with 2.51 left in the third quarter. Never too early to chase points, and Derrick Henry's gonna get him the two. He runs over Coleman and gets a couple of extra yards after. But for the Titans, the focus will, one, be on special teams because that's a complete whiff. Number two, defense, because the Lions offense has been moving the ball well. It's just that, you know, time of possession, the pace of the game is favoring Tennessee, which keeps the game, you know, the score down at least because you see Stafford, 12 for 16, 219 yards, not how many blemishes on his record so far? And it continues with this corner route to TJ Hawkinson, who continues to get open. Here's Marvin Hall with some great blocking. One man to beat. Jukes him and down by Jayon Brown at the two-yard line. Late in the third quarter, here's a big opportunity for either the Titans defense or the Lions offense. Two-possession game is what we can get with a touchdown. Ty Johnson on the carry, but he's not going to go anywhere. Naturally, he loses a yard, and we go to the start of the fourth quarter. Third down here, Stafford looking for Hawkinson, and he finds Adore Jackson, who is open with space and will not be caught. This is Tennessee running their way to the lead, but not the way they expected it. Instead of through Derrick Henry, it's through Adore Jackson, 
and a huge mistake from Matt Stafford flipping the field coast to coast. It was Adore Jackson with all eyes on TJ Hawkinson, who was the primary target all day long. And now the Titans have put themselves in a very favorable position with the way they play. The defense, though, will continue to have to improve because even though they got the pick six, the fact that we moved the ball pretty easily downfield speaks to, you know, the holes in this defense despite the talent, it seems like. They're just bleeding yardage in the passing game. Third down and four, though. Doing good so far. Can they get the stop on third? Absolutely not. Agnew is wide open. Bayer can't get there in time. The drive stays alive. Here's DeAndre Swift trying to run the ball. Swift, besides one good game, has not gotten too much going. So he's not going to get one of those 100-yard rushing performances. But Hawkinson is easily over 100 yards receiving. Stafford over 300 yards passing. Rashard Evans. He got the earlier big hit fumble. He hits under so pretty hard right there as Hawkinson with yet another reception, but that's gonna be underneath, and that's gonna set up a third down and short. Five wide for Matthew Stafford here. Four-man rush holding up well with this offensive line, but Stafford never located anyone panicking through the ball away out of bounds. The field goal unit here on fourth down and four. That is an interesting decision, interesting debate on whether to go for it. This is a monster debate, the onside kick. Oh, but a timeout call by the Titans was all we were really looking for there. We're just going to kick it off now. We just robbed the timeout from Tennessee, and now we will have to rely on our defense. Kicking that field goal is putting a lot of trust in our defense to contain an on fire now. Derrick Henry, who's going outside, all of a sudden, hey, Henry's gaining momentum. The longer the game goes, the tired the defense is getting, and that's when superstar backs like Derrick Henry really start earning their money. He's now at 130 yards, and that stat line, 18%. 60. It's completely wiped away from looking abysmal to looking great as Tennessee just, oh no, it's play action this time. Pressure. Oh, wow. Nearly picked there by Walker. Now second down. They go back to Henry, but he's met in the backfield. That's going to deactivate his X Factor and injure Taewon or the left tackle right there. Big, big play here on third down for the Titans as they at least get their way back into field goal range. Unfortunately, uh, Lewis, at least he's back, but yeah, they're going to have to settle for the field goal. No first down, not even close. So, Gotzkowski, oh, he's wide right. Shocker. And now all the Lions need is a field goal to win the game. With 327 left, we have plenty of time to pull this off. Keep that in mind. We are down by one with 327 left. So on first down, we're going to run the ball with DeAndre Swift. Conservative play call. Not going to work too far. Swift is rocked. Second down, conservative play call once again, checking it down to Ty Johnson there, and you'll notice that we're letting this car drip a little bit, so we might be trying to make this the last drive of the game, trying to keep the ball out of Derrick Henry's hands for good. But that all depends on converting a third down, which, yeah, we're not making any jokes about burning time. In fact, we just called a timeout after burning the entire play clock. So that, nonetheless, will set up a key third down and long for Stafford outside. Marvin Jones will not make the catch, and here, is where there is a dilemma. So I thought that we were up by one. This entire drive, I don't know why, but I thought we were up by one instead of down by one. So I was like, what? Fourth down, they want me to go for it? Yeah, you have to go for it in this situation because we're down by one. So here we are, Matt Stafford. Here comes Clowney. Wow, quick rush, turnover on downs, and the Titans are in a great position here to potentially burn out the clock. Whoa, but now with a big hit from Jared Davis on first down. Now second down and eight. This is Henry outside. He's got a first that will not end the game just yet, but will put our backs against the wall. We burn our second of three timeouts. So if we get a stop here, we might have about 30 seconds left if we get a stop. Derrick Henry's getting the ball three times here most likely. We stop him on first down. Second down, everybody's in the box waiting for King Henry who gets the ball. Snaps a little bit early. Henry not getting too far. Lions holding on to that final timeout. Third down and nine. This could decide the game. We're going to send the blitz. Tannehill is actually going to look to throw here. He's got an open John o. Smith who reaches the end zone for the touchdown. Titans going with a quick count there rather than burning out time and actually catches the Lions defense not set up. Works out for them, but they have left the Lions 47 seconds to work with. Yeah, I actually know the scoring situation this time. 
times, and we'll try to make it work. It is a one possession game after the PAT is up and good, but this is a dire situation that would be helped mightily by DeAndre Swift getting that ball from Stafford, but Matthew's a bit off. Second down here is Stafford with the time. Man open downfield. One of them is Galladay who makes the catch. Oh, Galladay does not stay out of bounds. He keeps it in, and that's going to cost the Lions their final timeout. A complete blown coverage by the Titans. They somewhat get away with it, but still, here they are. 37 yards needed for our Lions to march downfield. And then we need that two-point conversion. But, oh, wow, that's an intense. No grounding, loss of down and yards. So that's going to make this that much more tougher as Stafford. Moving, throwing flag. That's caught by Galladay. And the flag is roughing the passer. Unbelievable. That stops the clock. That stops the clock and moves the Lions to the 12-yard line. This is suddenly in reach. We have to go end zone. No timeout. So we can't get sacked. Oh, Stafford. Oh, that was nearly... That might have been a flag right there. Defensive pass interference, but the refs let it play. Instead, just second down here. Stafford this time going. Galladay! Who makes the catch, but out of bounds. Not even close. Now it's third down. Two more shots here. There is a chance to get a first down to two-yard line, but we definitely got to try to go end zone here as Stafford under pressure and throws the ball away. Doesn't even target anyone, and that's going to set up a do-or-die situation on fourth down. Five wide for Stafford. 13 seconds left pretty much got to go end zone here with no timeouts so here is Stafford with the ball Hawkinson not gonna get it and that's swatted turnover on downs and the ball game Tennessee is gonna kneel this one out one time let the last seconds drip off and just get the victory over the Detroit Lions who nearly marched their way back to force overtime just a bit off that was the theme of the game. For whatever reason, we were just a bit off on a couple of things. The pass from Stafford on the final play, just a bit off. The fact that I thought we were up by one instead of down by one, um, that's more than a little bit off. That is completely on me. This loss is pretty much just on me because we, we did everything to win the game besides a couple of things. One, threw a pick six. Like, that was just stupid. And two, the fact that you know I was literally chewing clock. I thought we were up by one. And even if we were up by one instead of down by one, that was a pretty bad drive as far as like trying to milk the game away. So you know, just just some bad execution. But we did have pretty much one mulligan to spare, as far as one loss to take in these final three games, and still give ourselves a good chance at making the playoffs and at least winning our division. That was the mulligan right there. Didn't want to burn it up. In that game, would have liked to hold on to that one, especially since, you know, next week you guys see the Bucks pretty much have the number one seed in the conference solidified. We're going to have to win that game against Tampa Bay now. We're going to have to win out these last two games pretty much to solidify our playoff spot. Because as you guys see, the NFC is pretty wild behind Tampa Bay. So that's going to do it. Leave a like in the video if you guys enjoyed what you guys saw today. Subscribe for more Met in 21 gameplays, especially if you guys enjoyed the CFM. And I will catch you guys next time. Thank you, as always, for watching.